strange magnitude 1.3 quake hit Pennsylvania just now, was felt by 80 people in a seismic zone near Lancaster of the New Madrid Real Foot Rift Zone. We see in Pennsylvania, where this earthquake hit, that there were past earthquakes. Pennsylvania is just underneath the southern part of the Great Lakes, as you can see, towards the 2 or 3 o'clock position in this map. So the red dot that you see there just below the uh, mountains is exactly where today's quake also hit, and it was felt by 80 people. Strange quake felt by, well, it's not that uh, very well populated. It's Lancaster County. is basically rural farmlands there. We've had a very strange earthquake in Pennsylvania today, 1.3 magnitude. Why is it strange, you say, 1.3 magnitude? Well, it's because of the amount of people that have reported feeling it. 80 people up to now reported feeling this earthquake. It's near Reading, Pennsylvania. From what I know, my sister lives there. It's a beautiful state. I've been there so many times. Uh, it's close to, uh, well, this is the area, as we know, of the, uh, the area that goes south of the Great Lakes. And let's pull out so we can see the uh, location. Again, pull out. Okay. This is uh, New Madrid right there, where the little hand is, right there. This is the New Madrid seismic zone, the real foot rift zone. It extends from the Gulf of Mexico, Mississippi River, all the way south of the Great Lakes, past Ottawa, Montreal, into the St. Lawrence Seaway. We've had a tremendous number of quakes in Canada as well. Just because the map does not show Canada activity, it's there. It's all along here, especially around these islands here. That whole west coast, the whole of the west coast, it's not just Alaska and uh, the west coast here, Oregon, Washington, California especially, the whole thing here is filled with earthquakes. And here as well, filled with earthquakes, right here. And th this is the area of our quakes today. New Madrid is still rocking. Okay, still rocking. This is a quake swarm here. Look at the, how th thick that is. And another quake swarm here, Tennessee. And here as well, another Tennessee. This is, of course, what we just said before, Pennsylvania. And this one is... Okay, in Quebec. We know that these earthquakes, because the sediment is so soft there, can be felt ten times more than they could be felt on the west coast. This one here. Okay, north of Reading, Pennsylvania, on the Appalachian Mountain, near the Appalachian Mountains. Of course, this is this is the location of the Real Foot Rift Zone, which is a Rift Valley, actually, and this should be called for what the geologists say, New Madrid Rift Valley. And I'm just now making another Rift Valley video on the Africa Great Rift Valley, of what happens when a continent starts to break up and split. This is what's happening here. They've told us that this area here is going to, it's a failed Rift Valley, actually. But at one point, it will, it's because of the fact that this, the continental plate is cracking, is cracking, and it's going towards the southeast. So at one point, uh, hopefully a long way into the future, this will fill up with seawater. It's going to become a passage, just like here, the St. Lawrence Seaway, right there. It starts filling, this all here, the St. Lawrence River, will break up. Right here. Doesn't take. It's actually. It's not that. Look. It, that's not that long. You have this here, this river system, and the lakes is actually not far from what it looks like in uh, Africa. 
you have a lake system along the Rift Valley as well. Uh, they have a lot of volcanoes there in, in the Rift Valley, but we also have volcanoes here as well. They're just very dormant. Maine itself has, it's uh, between, from one end to the other, it's 200 miles, and it's got five volcanoes. Four of those volcanoes are within a 100-mile stretch. So you've got five volcanoes in Maine alone. Um, all right, so let's take a look at how this was felt, what's going on there. Tectonic summary. Earthquakes in the Lancaster seismic zone. Since colonial times, people in Lancaster seismic zone, southeastern Pennsylvania, felt small quakes and suffered damage from larger ones. And this is, as we said, very strange because how many people felt it up to now? Let's see. 80. Well, wait, maybe that we have to refresh the page. 80, okay. 80 people felt it. Very strange that 80 people felt a 1.3 magnitude quake, five kilometers death, but they did. That's what they reported. All right. Earthquakes are felt once or twice per decade, with some decades having none, and the 1990s having as many as six earthquakes there. Earthquakes in the central and eastern U.S., although less frequent than in the western, are typically felt over a much broader region. East of the Rockies, what we're talking about now, an earthquake can be felt over an area as much as 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the West Coast. A magnitude 4 eastern U.S. quake typically can be felt as, as, at many places for as far as 60 miles from where it occurred, and it infrequently causes damage near its source. A magnitude 5.5 eastern U.S. quake usually can be felt as far as 300 miles from where it occurred, and sometimes causes damage far away as 25 miles. Faults. Earthquakes everywhere occur on faults within bedrock, usually miles deep. Most bedrock beneath the seismic zone was assembled as continents collided to form a supercontinent about 500 to 300 million years ago, raising the Appalachian Mountains. Most of the rest of the bedrock formed when the supercontinent rifted apart about 200 million years ago, to form what we now, uh, what are now the northeastern United States, the Atlantic Ocean, and Europe. A well-studied plate boundaries, and well-studied plate boundaries like San Andreas Fault in California, often scientists can determine the name of the specific fault that's responsible for an earthquake. In contrast, east of the Rocky Mountains is a rarely, this is rarely the case, the Lancaster seismic zone is far from the nearest plate boundaries, which are in the center of the Atlantic Ocean and in the Caribbean Sea. The seismic zone is laced with known faults, but numerous smaller or deeply buried faults remain undetected. Even the known faults are poorly located at earthquake depths. Accordingly, few, if any, earthquakes in the seismic zone can be linked to named faults. It's difficult to determine if a, no, a known fault is still active and could slip and cause an earthquake. As in most other areas east of the Rockies, the best guide to earthquake hazards in the Lancaster seismic zone is the earthquakes themselves. So we're talking about the Lancaster seismic zone, but as we know, it's part of um, it's part of the New Madrid seismic zone. Basically, it's part of the New Madrid seismic zone. Let's go to Ariel. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. Okay, there we go. It's much better. Okay. Oop, I pulled out too much. Okay. There we go. And um, as they said, they don't really have the too many known faults there. Most of them are on the west coast, so we don't expect to see any here. Oh, we have some here. Okay. There we can see a lot more there. There, there is. This is filled. This is the area. This is Yellowstone right there, and. This is, they don't, they have not plotted all the earthquakes, unfortunately. We've had so many lately, it's just uh, drowning in quakes. And as you can see, they have not plotted them. All right? This thing here. And one of the biggest quakes in, in Canada was a 7.1 around here. One of these big, uh, 
big events there. Okay, this is where we are today. And um, they have not plotted everything. And this is the New Madrid seismic zone. Real foot rift zone right there. This river system is going up there. And the lake systems, and this is it right here. And that's a failed rift zone, a failed rift valley. Um, that will be at one point splitting apart. Let's go and take a look since we're here. Okay, this should be lighting up basically like this. And this is the African Rift Valley. You can have them together so we can take a look at them. This is the African Rift Valley right there. Right there. And it goes into the Red Sea. Right there. Um, right there, that goes along. That's the fault line that goes along the Jordan River, Galilee, and... Uh, Dead Sea, Red Sea. And we've already established that Galilee is a volcano lake. Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, of the times of Jesus Christ and his disciples, that is a volcanic lake. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, that, that whole area has a lot of uh, spring baths around it too. From antiquity, from the Roman era, and even today, you can go there and uh, have a nice vacation to uh, have spring baths around the Sea of Galilee. Their uh, hotels and uh, tourist destinations are still there. Look at this. This is Greece. Look at this. Greece, Italy. Oh, in Greece. This is terrible. And this is Italy right here. Uh, North Africa. And uh, we have not. They have not plotted all of the earthquakes there. That's the other rift valley there. Similar to this. This will be at one point become filled with ocean as it breaks off to become another. Uh, a large island, I would say, like Madagascar, okay, right there. Okay, let's go back. And as we said, they felt it. Eighty people felt this. 1.3 magnitude quake. I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.